Ok, xin chào các bạn, mình là Phong đến từ Coi68 và mình đang ở đây tại sân khấu của sự kiện GM Việt Nam, Việt Nam Blockchain Week 2024 và ngồi cạnh mình ở đây là một vị khách rất là đặc biệt, cũng là một partner đồng hành cùng với GM Việt Nam trong năm nay luôn đó là Ayus, là co-founder và CTO của Layer Edge nhưng mà mình sẽ để anh ấy giới thiệu một chút về bản thân cũng như là dự án So I just say hi to our audience over there, Ayus So uh, I want you to give a, a little bit of introduction about you, your background and also the Layer Edge and your, uh, how you position yourself in the crypto market So uh, I started my tech journey from my college in at IDBHU, then I joined like Samsung where I work like majorly on the encryption part. So if you use any of the Samsung devices, the basically the backend like Samsung accounts encryption was done by me. And post that like I joined like Gnosis where I was a tech lead at Gnosis Builders, which was the ecosystem division of Gnosis. I also contributed in a project called Specular Network, which is an optimistic roll-up uh, with a novel one-step fraud proof mechanism uh, run by like UC Berkeley graduates. So I was the first engineer there. And then I started like Layer Edge. So in the Layer Edge, like the main like differentiation that we are bringing to the market is we are creating an uh, optimistic roll-up on Bitcoin. And the reason why we are using the optimistic roll-up is that underlying stack, everyone is using like BitVM. And BitVM uh, works optimistically where the transactions are happening uh, off-chain and the validation of those transactions are happening on-chain. So we are building that specific technology to the Bitcoin so that we can have like native verification on Bitcoin. And right now, like we have our data validation live. So your data is right now stored on the Bitcoin and like uh, the data settlement is done on the Bitcoin only. Oh, I see that. That's really cool. Uh, so my, my curious about, about layers, I want to like fully understand about that. It's really curious of mine. So that is from the technical point of view. Yeah. So um, on, the, on the user interface, like what user can expect by your solution on Bitcoin network? Yeah, so uh, it's like uh, like the all the tech is for the community and the for users only. So like what a uh, key advantage that we provide user is that like uh, everyone trusts Bitcoin as a like a proof of truth, like a, because like it's uh, it cannot be like a change very easily. So whereas like most of our competitors are majorly running their own validator, that means the chain can be attacked by different attack vectors. Whereas our chain basically settles on Bitcoin. So if you trust Bitcoin, we have like equivalent security to Bitcoin. So you get the Bitcoin equivalent security at like fraction of the cost. What I mean, uh, how I mean to say is, like at a Bitcoin, you get a single transaction from 10 to $50 somewhere around the range. On our chain, you can get it like for a few cents. So you get a fraction of cost, but the same level of security compared to Bitcoin. That's really awesome. All right, so um, from, from your point of view, uh, as a project with a, with a lot of experience, um, I, when I catch up with the community out there, I can see that people are really like optimistic about the, the market right now. And they pretty much saying this bull market is coming. So from your point of view, um, like what is the key uh, driving factor of the market right now? And what is the net big thing that we can expect from the market? And how Layer S is doing to capture that picture? Yeah, so like the, the main reason why like right now a lot of people are building on Bitcoin is the Taproot upgrade. Post that like we have Ordners, BRC20, uh, Runes, a lot of things are building on Bitcoin. And the thing is, uh, on the Bitcoin, these are all uh, tokens are there, but they are not being utilized in a very efficient way. So when you can bring them on Bitcoin, uh, so on our layer edge, then what can actually happen is you can actually earn yield on it. So we uh, enable the whole DeFi ecosystem for uh, this uh, Bitcoin ecosystem. Not only that, like we allow like very new different functionalities that were not present. Like uh, there are a lot of projects like uh, uh, stable coins built on Bitcoin that's developing on us, and like several different projects. Like we are enabling the whole DeFi ecosystem for Bitcoin on our chain, and that means like your Bitcoin is now able to earn yield natively on our chain. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to like the blockchain dilemma, uh, there will be like the scalability, the security and the decentralization. So decentralization and security is no question as for Bitcoin. But what you guys are doing is about the scalability, right? So um, what, what is uh, the project can, can uh, expect and what are criteria when for you looking for when it comes to like partnership with, with you guys with Layer Edge? Yeah, so uh, how I look uh, at our like Layer Edge is uh, it's more like a scalable sol uh, like scaling solution on the Bitcoin. What I mean to say is like right now the Bitcoin supports like around 10 transactions per second, but with our chain, we can actually support close to 2000 transactions per second. The only difference is we will have a challenge paid, post that challenge paid, your transaction will be settled on the Bitcoin. But like this is a trade off, like if you are getting like the dirt cheap prices and a lot of transaction throughput, and that is natively settled on the Bitcoin only. So what, what is like uh, the most difficulty, the most difficult things that you encounter like, along while building that solution? Yeah, so uh, one of the like uh, critical challenges that we face, like there were two main challenges, one on the technical end, one on the like uh, 
like ecosystem in. So on the technical end, uh, like the main challenge is to make sure that the Bitvium architecture settles really fast because right now there are like some delays in the transaction settlement and we are like actively working, we are at the forefront of it so that we can settle like really fast so that our community has the best experience. And on the ecosystem side, like uh, we need to get like some uh, good uh, amount of like projects building on us on which we are pretty successful like right now we have more than 35 40 projects that are act actively building on us and creating a vibrant community around our project I see, I see. Um, one interesting uh, fact about Vietnam Vietnam market because I we based in here um, so and in Kairos uh, just last just last uh, just last quarter we uh, published the the report the market report that we conduct uh, and within that, we, we make a survey and ask like, uh, what is the, the chain? What is the, uh, the chain, the, the ecosystem that user put their set in that the most? So the first one is no doubt Ethereum. Ethereum has had a lot of use case and I think, but the second is, is Bitcoin. So yeah, I think like um, uh, Bitcoin is like getting a lot of attention, but pretty much like traditionally people still see it as like a, a, an asset, like a safe asset, a safe having assets that they just buy it and hold it and do, not, do, not, not doing anything. So um, how do you see, like, how do you incentivize people to like um, doing more use case with the asset that they have in hand? Yeah. Like, it's, a, it's a pretty good question. So uh, what we feel is like we are at a precip uh, precipitous of like 2018 in the Ethereum cycle. So in 2018, the Ethereum was mostly about like the projects natively building on Ethereum and like very few projects were there. And post that, like there was a big uh, S curve because like a lot of different uh, L2s came and a lot of scalability increases and the utility also increased. So we believe we are the same ecosystem in the Bitcoin side where there are a lot of different projects who are building on Bitcoin, but due to technical infrastructure challenges, they are very limited. So if we take all the heavy burden of the infrastructure then they can just build a smart contract and develop their like projects really wise and really well and on the other hand like we feel like there is close to like a 1.5 trillion dollar liquidity lock on the bitcoin chain which we can help unlock and make sure that that uh, liquidity is well utilized in the ecosystem i see i see all right that is really detailed but let's jump into like higher level overview so when when it comes to um when men mentioning about a retail user uh, as we now are in the bull market, we can see that there's a lot of new users that are coming uh, to the ecosystem, to the market like every day. Um, and, but you, like from the point of view of someone who had experience, you've been through multiple circles. Um, there are two questions, like what is the thing that differentiates this circle the most? We have seen that like, DeFi summer, GameFi summer, meme coin season, to name a few. Um, what is the thing that makes this circle different? And for the people who just come to the, the blockchain space, um, what are the advice that you can give to them so that they don't make the mistake that we probably have made in the past? So like it's always great to learn from your past mistakes. So what uh, what I believe is like in the past cycles we have a lot of like uh, speculation driven drives that uh, that were pretty good. But uh, in this cycle we are like way more focused on the core infrastructure because everyone realized in the ecosystem that uh, the core infrastructure is yet to be built on uh, like all of the like uh, Web3 side. And once the core infrastructure is ready, then we can build like really cool projects on top of it. So this cycle, I believe, is more of an infrastructure play, and like uh, like we are building like the guardrails for the new uh, Web3 that's coming up. And like once everything is ready, then we'll see again like a really good uh, DeFi summer and all those booms. But first, we need to get the base infra ready so that it's easier for users to build and safer for users to interact with. And and I found the advice for the retail user that they come and try out with the DeFi stuff. Yeah, so uh, on the uh, advice for the retail user is more on the sense that like, uh, like always like uh, first try, uh, first if you are uh, interested about any different protocol, just first try it out. Don't go very heavy in the initials. Go for the security orders. Check for the security first, but because in the like in our ecosystem there are a lot of. Uh, uh, like, uh, like security uh, vulnerabilities are there. So from a technical aspect, what I will say is go for the security first. And if everything is secure, then uh, try with a small amount. And when you're comfortable, then you can actually gradually increase the amount. Uh, I'm not into very much philosophy of promoing everything into like the first go. I'm more like you have to build consistently so that everything is for the long term. Because we are not here for a one cycle play. We are here for like close to 10 to 100 year game. I see. Um, so when I, I understand that like, security is really important, but for, like, for the normal user, um, usually like uh, when it comes to DeFi, you user have to take a, a responsibility for their yeah. asset, for their security. But like we, we couldn't expect that people can read the smart contract, right? You also from layer S. Um, what do you guys do to like educate the community about like, everything? Yeah. So uh, first of all, like uh, uh, on our side, like we will focus that uh, 
most of the contract like most of the dapps that we're building on us we will uh, partner with uh, security solutions like security companies that actually audit and we will do like audit with them so that like our initial projects are super safe and very good for the users because what we believe is like we are dealing with money which is like very integral aspects of anyone's life so we should be utmost cautious with it uh, and on, on the like education side like uh, i would like like uh, we also plan to have a small like education seminars and a small website where users can get all the guides on how they can safely interact with the whole web3 space and uh, like how they can protect themselves who cool. and follow up with, with that as well um what is your future plan what we can be excited about when seeing about layer edge yeah so uh, our future plan is like very cut and simple so we want to become the dominant like the number one like a uh, roll up on the bitcoin space we are among like the best optimistic roll up in the market and what we aim to provide is a very cheap experience where users can actually unlock the liquidity that's locked on the bitcoin side yeah. and give them a uh, like a really good place where they can experiment with different experimental technologies but with a guardrail so that they are pretty safe and because whenever you want to do any experiment like you need guardrails to protect you so we will be the guardrails we will be the infrastructure provider to make sure everything is safe and sound and you can do all the type of uh, experimentation on our chain i see okay so um one last question uh when because you come to vietnam Uh, it's mean like uh, this market is really important for you guys. Uh, how do you see like Saudi Asia and Vietnam like emerging markets um, coming to 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 DeFi? It's different from the other country that you have have working with. And like, what is your expectation for all of them? Yeah. So uh, like from the Vietnam market, I have seen like the people here are like very enthusiastic about crypto, and they have a very uh, eagerness to learn. So uh, whenever you talk to someone about like the decentralized finance, they the acceptance of this is much more than even the first world countries that I've been with. Like uh, people are really accepting uh, the new technologies, new things, and this is because like uh, like most of uh, like our countries in the Asia have like seen a rapid growth in recent years. That's why like way more experimental and way more successful with all the new techs because that's called the leapfrogging effect. Like. Uh, if you see a, cl a close example, then uh, like if you see the Europe, like they went from a, a, like a telephone to a dial-up system, then to mobiles, and like we just le leave from from like our telephones, landlines to directly mobile system. So that's why like this uh, Vietnamese crowd and the whole South Asian crowd is actually leapfrogging the whole traditional finance directly into the DeFi. That's a really, really good like uh, com comparison. Uh, it's just really nice, really easy to understand. Oh yeah, and so yeah, that's. Uh, I think thank you for really insightful sharing today. And will you, what what is the last words you want to share with the community uh, in Vietnam? Yeah, so like what I want to share is like uh, like we are there for you, and like uh, like our aim is to like make sure that the whole ecosystem grow, grows with us, and like everyone grows. So it's like uh, have fun, enjoy, learn everything before like diving into it like like I'm, i'm more of a cautious guy but i would say just experiment with all the techs because experimentation is free and you can actually learn a lot about it the whole ecosystem first learn and then invest so that you can actually come on top of the whole ecosystem okay. thank you for your sharing and you guys remember to follow layer x social media and to keep up with the newest updates about the project and exciting plan ahead for you guys so one again i just thank you for spending time with us today and good luck really nice to have you here with us